Hi, uh, welcome to this installment of my video blog. Um, this time we're going to talk about race nutrition. Uh, so everything that goes into your mouth on race day, or during the race actually, is, is what we're going to uh, address here. Um, there's three things that's very important. Um, there's your fluid intake, uh, because you sweat and you lose fluids. Um, there's your energy intake, uh, because this needs to be replaced in order for you to finish the race. And there's your salt and electrolyte uh, intake. Um, Sweat contains salt and you lose salts during the race as well. Um, in regards to your fluid intake, this can vary quite a lot. Um, and it's important that you don't drink too little and, not, and yet that you don't drink too much either. Um, basically, the warmer it is, the more you sweat and the more you have to drink. Um, and also, if you're a larger athlete, you will sweat more than a small athlete and obviously then have to drink more. Um, but it's, it's quite hard actually to get the exact number. Um, one rule of thumb is that you can uh, just address your thirst and just go by your thirst and feel what your body tells you. Um, so when you're thirsty, drink. If you're not thirsty, then take a break from drinking. Um, but if you want to get in a little bit more specific about this, uh, you can try and estimate your sweat rate. And you do that by making a session of 30 to 60 minutes uh, at race pace uh, in both running and also one in cycling. Um, and preferably also in the climate that is during the race or maybe even try and get one in a colder climate and one in a warmer climate. And what you do is that you weigh yourself before and after the session. Um, and the difference you have in your weight is what you have lost in sweat. Um, and you can calculate it out from that. Make sure that your weighing is standardized uh, so you are almost naked, preferably, uh, before and after when you weigh yourself. Uh, so you don't have to address the sweat accumulated in your clothes. Um, in regards to any in energy intake, uh, you have uh, carbohydrates stored in your body in two places where you use them from two, two different source, sources. Uh, you have a store in the liver and you have one in your muscles. Um, the store in the liver is quite small and it supplies your bloodstream uh, which fuels your brain. Um, and basically that's the, the purpose of that is to, uh, to maintain your blood sugar levels. So if the liver store of carbohydrate is depleted, uh, your blood sugar will go down and you will experience what we call a bonk. Uh, which is basically that you become dizzy and that you're a little bit disoriented and lose a little balance. And you've probably tried this in your training. Um, and basically you just need to take in some sugar or some quick absorbable carbohydrates and you'll be fine again within 15 to 20 minutes. Um, this, the second part of your carb, carbohydrate stores in your muscles uh, can, will also be depleted during the race. And when they do or when they get down to a very low level, uh, you will hit what, what, what is known as the wall. Um, and basically when your carbohydrate stores get down to that level, uh, your legs will become stiff and you will have pain taking your steps and so forth. So obviously replenishing your carbohydrates through what you drink and eat uh, is important to uh, make sure that the wall is postponed as long as possible and when it's there that you deal with it as best as possible. Um, you can get your energy from different sources. Um, you can get it from fluids. This is a powder that you mix up in water. Um, and this is the, the, actually the best option because that is uh, readily, readily absorbable and the one that is absorbed qu most quick uh, without any distress in your gastrointestinal system. Um, then there's the gels. They're a little bit more concentrated so you should take those with water. And uh, then finally there's the bars which are more solid and also they can provide some sense of fullness but they shouldn't be your main choice uh, because they're slower absorbable than the other two forms. Um, you have to find a combination for you. I would suggest mostly fluids and uh, maybe if you're a high end, an athlete finishing in the, in the fast uh, half of the field, go mostly for fluids and just have one bar or maybe two bars. If you're a slower athlete in the back end of the field, you can have more solids. Um, aim at getting about 50 or 60 grams of carbohydrates uh, per hour at first and see if you can tolerate that and find a, you know, some sort of carbohydrate solution that works for you during your training. Experiment, try and error and, and monitor what you do. Um, if that goes well, you can try and move it up to about 90 to 100 grams of carbs and make sure that you have carbs in the right forms. Both glucose and fructose is, is important and most of the big brands have that. Um, so make sure that you have that because that will, will allow you to absorb more um, when you're working out. Don't eat more than 100 grams per hour because you won't absorb it. Um, 
In regards to electrolyte loss, um, this is important. When you sweat, you lose your salts, and, and during the race, these will get depleted. Um, so obviously, you need to take in some some electrolytes uh, during the race. Um, mostly, most important is sodium, which you can also get from just regular salt. Um, and you have to aim at about one gram per hour. Uh, there's a big variation. Some are salty sweaters, which will show up as white stains on their clothes. Others are not so salty sweaters and they have a lower amount of salt in the sweat. Um, but basically just try and start out at one gram per hour and see if that works on your long rides um, so that you feel good also towards the end if you're proper fueled also. Um, and then uh, if, if you feel like your salty sweater, try a little more, but just start out with a one gram per hour. So to catch up on this, um, make sure that you drink adequately um, not too much and not too little. Um, make sure that you're taking energy, about 50-60 grams per hour, um, uh, mostly in a fluid form. And finally, and make sure that you replenish uh, some salt. And, and when you do that, make sure also that you, you consider the amount of salt in your energy drink um, when you calculate the one gram per hour. So fluid, energy and electrolytes. I hope that will bring you well through the race and can keep you fueled all the way to the finish line.